the New York City Housing Authority again under the microscope. NYCHA's second-in-command, Michael Kelly, resigned Tuesday. Kelly was involved in the agency's efforts to hide its lead paint inspection failures from tenants, the media, and authorities. Kelly is the third top NYCHA official to step down in the wake of the lead paint scandal. Kelly's replacement, Vito Masacolo, has long had a successful history of overseeing programs that went after negligent landlords. More scandal rocked the Housing Authority Tuesday when it was revealed that NYCHA chairwoman Shola Olotoye reportedly lied under oath when she claimed that over 4,000 apartments had been properly inspected when they had not been. NYCHA had used uncertified employees to conduct the inspections, who then filed incorrect certifications of compliance. Now, NYCHA will be under a watchful eye, as will other city agencies. The man who led the charge against them is back with a new role. City Councilman Richie Torres everyone. was just appointed uh, to head the one shuttered Council's Oversight and Investigations here, Committee. Sorry, Jack Ford asked the Councilman how the committee came back into existence. Well, we have a new speaker, Corey Johnson who's on a mission to establish the council as an independent branch of government. You know, we're, we exist to be a check on the mayor. Right. And the reality is the bureaucracy in the city is deeply dysfunctional. You know, bureaucrats tend to make decisions with little accountability and little transparency. And so the speaker is creating a new division of professional investigators, right? Some of whom will be auditors, some of whom will be former prosecutors, some of whom will be investigative journalists. So this is just not a, a sort of titled committee. Serious. This is a, a significant yes. structure here It's going to be been unlike place. anything we've ever seen before. Yeah. It's going to be a bona fide investigative division. And I will chair the committee that will oversee the division. And the objective here is to, in some sense, I'm functioning as the council's archaeologist. Right? We're digging How deep you, yeah, tell me, explain that. into the that? mismanagement of government. Okay. Because the goal here, and some of these investigations could span months. And the objective is to conduct the kind of investigations that will drive long and lasting change in the way the city operates so that it's more accountable to the public. Any limitations on what areas of government can be looked into? There are no limitations, but there's a, a crucial both partnership and distinction with the Department of Investigations. Explain so that. The Department of Investigations investigates for the purpose of criminal law enforcement, right? And their investigations can often result in arrest or prosecution. We are investigating for the purpose of oversight, right? Our goal is not to curb public corruption. That is the domain. That's what of they the do. You've got prosecutors, yeah, U.S. Exactly attorneys, right. Department of Investigations. Well, there are so more no wiretaps right, in the city right. council. So is, is it fair to say yours is more, let's find out if government is not working, exactly. why it's not working, and let's see if we can make it work better? Our mandate is to make government work for the people. How do we make government do more, better, cheaper? How do we make it more accountable and more transparent? Having said that, the council does have the authority to ask DOI to conduct investigations into the operation. So we're going to be governing in partnership with the Department of Investigation. So what kind of powers, then, will this, this committee have? Delineate more specifically for me. We what will they have universal do. jurisdiction in the city of New York. We will have universal subpoena power. So we could investigate the New York City Housing Authority, which oversees the public housing system, uh, health and hospitals, which oversees the public hospital system, uh, the Parks Department, which oversees right. all the parks in New York City. There is no limit to our jurisdiction within the city of New York. Let's talk about the, the New York City Housing Authority. Yeah. Uh, you and I have had a couple conversations Absolutely. about that over the last few months. The problem uh, with the lead paint and the failure to do inspections yeah. and what apparently looks like uh, people literally lying about inspections having been done. Are you, are you seeing any progress in terms of, of NYCHA, the Housing Authority? It's not clear. We're continuing to investigate the lead safety program. Uh, and we are alarmed by the citywide collapse of heating systems. I mean, in my own district, I had senior citizens who were nearly freezing to death and who have been living without heat and hot water. You have a number of residents of public housing who increasingly have become dependent on space heaters, which are known to pose a fire hazard. I've heard extreme cases in which residents have left their oven on, risking exposure to carbon monoxide. So the lack of heat and hot water in public housing, the lack of reliable heat and hot water, is creating a whole range of other hazards. And that's something that we're going to examine very closely. I've seen recently a, an exchange of, of finger pointing, I think it's fair yeah. to call it, where uh, the mayor's office was saying, well, we're waiting for money from the state that's yeah. supposed to go to the housing authority to help us. And the state is saying, well, you know, the mayor's office, that you didn't get us the paperwork to, to get this started on time. So we're working on it now. 
I, I, it, it almost sounds like the one, one hand doesn't know what the other hand is doing. Does that make... Well, there's plenty of blame to go that? around. I mean, the, the central villain is the federal government. Which Why is that? Starved. Well, the federal... Ultimately, public housing is a federal program and a federal obligation. Mm -hmm. And the federal government has so savagely starved public housing of funding that NYCHA has come to accumulate about $25 billion worth of capital needs in order to bring the public housing stock into a state of good repair. Just to get it where it should be. Systems. Exactly right. So this is not capital improvements. Exactly. This is just to get not, it where it should be. We're not be. turning it into the Marriott. We're bringing it into a livable state. It would cost $25 billion. Are you, last question for you, are, are, and are you at all optimistic that the, the city and the state and the federal government might be able to get together to start that, that funding, create the pipeline that's necessary there to, to get these buildings up to a livable status? I have concerns that, you know, we're likely to face severe budget cuts from the federal government, given the reality of a Donald Trump presidency. I have concerns that we might see declining revenues in New York City, given the likelihood of a recession. But I am hopeful about the impact that our new Oversight and Investigations Committee will have on the efficiency of city government. They introduce that and accountability. Absolutely. Um, and transparency. And, and hopefully that's a recipe for some in the service success of the down the road. Yeah. Indeed. Councilman, it's always a pleasure to spend some time with you. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely.